Aw, come on. It's a phrase a lot of daughters say to their fathers. I myself have said it to my dad numerous times over the years. But on one occasion in particular, it was because of ketchup. I just couldn't see myself putting blue ketchup on my salt potatoes. I mean, what was he thinking when he bought this? It was the year 2000, and I had had a preconceived notion of how ketchup should look. It should be red, or at least a varying shade of red, and blue ketchup, although quirky, was not appetizing to me. In fact, it kind of grossed me out. Well, it seems I wasn't alone. We all form an expectation of how food should feel, look, taste, and smell based on past experience and logic. While previous experiences determine our expectations of how something should taste, sometimes what we see can override what we think we taste. In April of this year, Dr. Terry Cree, a professor and researcher of food science at Cornell University, spoke at a meeting of the American Chemical Society about the phenomenon of sight trumping taste. And he gave an example of how it has already been put to the test by having people taste wine of an altered color and then describe its flavor. The wine they were served was actually white wine, but it had been tinted a deep red to look like Merlot or Cabernet. After taking some sips, the lucky participants were asked to describe the flavor of the wine in their glass. The words they used to describe the taste of the disguised white wine were terms typically used to describe the flavor and aroma of red wine. The natural color pigment used to tint the white wine red is derived from grapes, but it is said to be odorless and nearly flavorless. So how could their palates have been so off? They had been tricked into thinking that the white wine was actually red. Just based on the color? Did the supposedly odorless and nearly flavorless color pigment in fact alter the taste of the wine, even though it wasn't supposed to? Or did the color of the presented wine override all of their senses and change their perception of its flavor? Let's take a look at another study and enjoy some cheese with our wine. A study released in May 2012 found that consumers gave lower ratings for how low-fat cheddar cheese tasted when the color of the cheese was altered to be too translucent or too white and all other factors were kept equal. They thought that the cheese that appeared less yellow than the others simply was not as flavorful, even though the only thing different about it was its color. Other studies support the premise that the color of foods and beverages can toy with our taste buds. In 1993, a frequently referenced study showed that by altering the color of fruity flavored beverages, people could be deceived into thinking that certain flavors were there when in fact they weren't. Think about your favorite lemon-lime soft drink. Would it not be weird to see it any other color than yellow, green, or clear? By now, it might be quite apparent that color can, in fact, change the way we perceive taste. But can shape have any effect? Maybe. Researchers in China found that when people looked at an object that was shaped like a circle or an ellipse, they thought they tasted sugar in their small cup of water, even when there was no sugar present. Could it be because circles remind us of traditionally sweet things like cupcakes and cookies? When shown an object that was more angular, like a square or a rectangle, they were far less likely to identify the water in their cup as tasting sugary. But before we all go cutting our brownies into circles, the study did have a small sample size of 15 subjects, so don't go throwing away those rectangular baking pans just yet. While we're at it, let's talk containers. Can the color of the container change a person's opinion on the flavor of the food inside? Perhaps yes. On a cold, wintry day last January, researchers in Spain and England published a study showing that people actually rated hot chocolate to be the most tasty when it was served in an orange or a cream-colored mug, as opposed to a red or a white one. Did the orange and cream mugs make people feel all warm and toasty inside while they sipped, as opposed to the stark white one? Could we hypothesize that the fire engine red mug would taint a sipper's view of the hot chocolate, thinking that it might contain hot chocolate that is a bit too hot in its temperature?
For me, it is quite logical to think that one palate may affect the other. After all, do we not look for clues to let us know if food is fresh or rotten, washed or unclean? Visual evaluation of food can tell us if something is safe to eat. When the unexpected presentation of food is done purposefully, it may trigger our curiosity and act as a novelty in an otherwise mundane meal. But like the blue ketchup, if the appearance of the food is altered too much, it might detract from our appetite rather than enhance it. A good chef knows this, that tasting is not done by just the tongue. Eating is a feast for the senses. One must creatively evoke all of the senses in harmony in an unexpected yet expected way in order for us to have a memorable and extraordinarily pleasant culinary experience.